Genesis chapter 6 is our reading that we're doing for this particular uh, time of the year. Uh, on yesterday, we read Genesis chapter 6, and I just want to remind us of that same chapter. Uh, for those of you that want to follow, you certainly can. Uh, the Word of God, uh, we see that God is, is at a point in the history of humanity that he is no longer pleased All right. with what's happening. All right. The Bible says, now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, yeah. and that daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and all they right. took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, all right. for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men yeah. who were of old men of renown. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that right. every right. intent of the <clears throat> thoughts of his heart was mm. evil yeah, continually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth and he was grieved mm. in his heart. Yeah. Mm. So the Lord said, I will destroy oh man oh whom God. I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, birds of the air, for I am sorry <laughs> That I have made them. The verse 8 is just capsulizes everything. Mm -hmm. And right. it says, but Noah found grace yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. in the yeah. eyes of the Thank Lord. You. All right, all right. Uh, yeah. But Noah Thank found God. grace Thank yeah. you. in the yeah. eyes of the Lord. And I asked myself that question as I read this particular passage, even asking myself in the midst of all that we are experiencing right now in life, all right. mm -hmm. do we recognize that, first of all, God is gracious to us, yes, yes. but are we extending the grace that God gives to us, are we demonstrating that grace in our own lives? Oh, Lord. Uh, 
And so today I ask that you would just go with me and go to God in prayer. And just asking again that he would just open up our hearts just to yeah, yeah. worship him in the spirit of beauty and the spirit of holiness. Recognizing that we are uh, those persons who are recipients All of right. his wonderful grace. Right. So Father, yeah, how we yeah. stretch our hands to you for there's no other help we know. If you would draw yourself from us, we really have nowhere to go. And so, God, we thank you right now for thank the expression you, again of your love, your kindness, your generosity, your mercy. Yes, yes. And yes, thank you for your grace. Yes, yes, Lord. Because we are convinced that it was your grace that woke us up this morning. Thank it's your you, grace yeah, thank you, Lord. that took care of us last night. It's your grace that have allowed us to get up this morning. It's your grace that have allowed ourselves to prepare for worship. It is your grace that is allowing us to do what we're doing right now, the ability to think, the ability to talk, the ability to move our limbs, the ability to see that our eyes are still blinking. God, we know it's only by your grace. And so we thank you this morning for that amazing grace. God, we pray now that as you continue to help us to see your grace, help us to witness your grace, help us to understand your grace, that you would give us a mind that we will worship you now in a spirit of holiness, in a spirit of beauty, in a spirit of recognizing that there's no one who deserves as much respect as you do, regard as you do, no one who who, ex- who re- expects reverence as you do. Yeah, so, yeah. God, thank you, thank, you, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to express our worship to you in song, in prayer, yeah. in the reading of your word, yeah. in the hearing of your word, and then, Lord, in the preaching of your word. Yeah. We ask that you would speak to the preacher, speak through the preacher. Help us to hear what you would have us to hear, Lord. Yeah. To the end that the glory, the praise, and the honor will be yours. Lord, we're here right now. We got pain, but we're going to give you praise. Yes, God. yes Lord. We, yes. We're here right now. We are a bit, some can be a bit down, yes. but we're still going to give you the glory and honor oh, that you God. deserve. Because, oh, yes. oh, yes. yes. Lord, you said that you inhabit the praises of yeah, our people. Yeah, Help yeah. us to know we can feel just a whole lot better yes. oh, Lord. if we would just give you praise. Yes. Yes. I, 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 our look on life would be a whole lot better oh, yes. if we would just give you the praise. Yes. Yes. So help yes. us right now please, Lord. Yeah, please, Lord. for the next hour or so to give you undivided praise please, and Lord. undivided yes. passion and undivided attention because yes. at the uh-huh. end of the day, Lord, we want you to get the glory. Yes. Yes. We want Always. you to get all the honor. Yeah, and always. we want you to get all the praise. Yeah, we thank you right now in advance you, for what God. you're going thank to do. You, it's in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. We pray it all in his name. Yeah. And we pray it for his sake. Yeah. And all who agreed said, amen, amen, amen. 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 I'm going to ask now if you would allow our children uh, to have their time, their attention. Yeah, yeah. If you would, to focus on the song that is going to be. Uh, uh, rendered to them as our brothers again are leading us in our worship on today as far as praise is concerned. So bring our children, if you would, forward so that they can join in in what we're doing in giving God the praise that he so rightfully deserves. Bye. 
mighty Christian. I am a Christian. I am a Christian. A mighty, mighty Christian. A mighty, mighty Christian. I've got a shield of faith. I've got a shield of faith. Righteous breastplate. Righteous breastplate. Sword of the Spirit. Sword of the Spirit. My lips are covered by truth. My lips are covered by truth. Helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Gospel shoes on. And above all, and above all, I said above all, I said above all, I said above all, I said above all, I'm dressed in the whole armor of God.
Think of his goodness. You just think. Think of his goodness. Of his goodness. Of his goodness. God's been good to me, yeah. Think of his goodness. I know he's been good to you. Think of his goodness. Think of his goodness. Think of his goodness. All that he done for you, yeah. Think of his goodness. God's been so good, yeah. Of his goodness, of his goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah. Think of his goodness. Think of his goodness. Think of his goodness. Have God been good to you? Think of his goodness. Have God been good to you? Think of his goodness. He brought me out from a mighty long way. Think of his yeah, goodness. think of his goodness. Think of Much of I cannot tell it all yet. I got hands to weave, yeah. Ooh, I got legs to walk, yeah. Think of his goodness. Think of his goodness. Oh, you just think, yeah, yeah. Of his goodness. Yeah, yeah. Just think, just think of his goodness to you. All he done for you, just think of his goodness to you. Take inventory of just your think life, of his goodness to you. He healed just the sick, yeah. Just think of his goodness to you. He raised just the dead, just think of his goodness to you. Think of his goodness to just you. Just think of his yeah. goodness to oh, you. Yeah, oh, I think, yeah. Just think of his goodness to you. He's been very good, yeah. Just think of his goodness to you. He blessed me once, yeah. Yeah, he blessed me twice, yeah. I don't know how you feel about it, yeah. Oh, but God is good. Just think of his goodness to you. Just think. Just think of his goodness to you. Just think. Just think of his goodness to you. Just think. Just think of his goodness to you. Oh, yeah, just think. Yeah. Just think of his goodness. When you go to bed at night, just yeah. think of his he, he watch over you, yeah. Just think of oh, I know. Just think of his Woke goodness. Woke me up early this morning. Just think yeah. of his goodness to you. Just think. Just think of his goodness to you. Just think. Just think of his goodness to you. Oh, you just, just think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Just think of yeah, his yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord. All right. Yeah. Good morning to all who are assembled and to those who are on the world wide web this morning. We greet you in the name of our Christ, and we are so happy to be able to be back found in the house of the Lord one more time. It is such a blessing that God has watched over us for these number of days and now have found ourselves still on this side of heaven, and we say amen find ourselves this morning in our text when we think on the things that are taking place in this world today 
the situations and circumstances that many are facing with challenges of furloughs and layoffs and, and life just itself being challenging. Uh, children having not been able to go back to school and, and mothers and fathers just trying to figure out some way, how, somehow, how they're going to end up with their ends meeting. But God is still on the throne. He's still able to provide for us the needs that we have. And my appeal today is to the church, the body of Christ, that even in this time of us not being able to assemble as we are used to doing, that we will find ourselves not becoming complacent and falling by the wayside and falling under false doctrine and teaching that has led some astray, as the Bible would say. In our text this morning, we find ourselves in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3. 2 Timothy, chapter 3. If you have your Bibles or whatever device you may be using this morning, you would turn it to 2 Timothy, chapter 3, and we will begin to read these verses that we want to share for this time with you and be out of your way. If you have it, just say amen. 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 Beginning at verse 1 in chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. Chapter 3, 2 Timothy. It reads, he says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecution, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from them whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be completely thoroughly equipped for every good work. And we like to tag this text a test, testing time for the believer. Testing time for the believer, you may be seated after hearing the word of God being read. Testing time for the believer. We find that in this text or in this letter that the Apostle Paul writes to his protege, his colleague, his, whom he addresses as his son in the ministry, he leaves him there in Ephesus to minister to the church of Ephesus. There are things going on in the church that Paul wants to address Timothy, the leader of the church, to address. And one of the things that was going on was in chapter 2 of this same chapter, of this same book, 
chapter 2, verses 14 through 18, we find that that was an issue that was in the church that was disturbing every other believer or the other believers that was in the body of Christ. And if, and if you turn with me back right quickly to chapter 2, we'll see what the problem was in this particular text that Paul had addressed Timothy to, had Paul had to address Timothy on how to address this issue. Look at verse 14, go to chapter 2 right quick and look at verse 14. He says, remind them of these things, charging them in verse 14 in chapter 2, before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves to prove to God a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He says, but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase more to more ungodliness. Then he says, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymenus and Philodus are of this sort, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection has already passed, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. Now, we see the problem Paul addresses there in the text. He's, he's saying, Timothy, we got an issue of heresy. We got an issue of some false teaching that's going on. They are saying that the resurrection has already taken place in the bodily form. And what they were saying was the resurrection was the only time you would be resurrected was when you actually were born again. That was the only resurrection that was going to take place. But we understand that as believers in the body of Jesus Christ, we have a hope because of the bodily resurrection one day that we all will experience through Jesus Christ. So Paul, who is now in prison in a cold Roman cell, who's there awaiting his execution by Nero, the emperor. And Paul there is writing to his colleague and saying, hey, I want to address th these things, and I even call these men names because I want you to know who they are and be aware of what they're doing. And in times like these, we find ourselves, if we are not careful, in a world today where we see, as Isaiah was saying in Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 and 21, he says that we call evil good and good evil in a day and time like this. But be encouraged, saints, and understand that this time is a time of testing for the believers in Jesus Christ. We know that there's a problem with some time with us now congregating and coming together as we're used to doing. But it's still not a time to come complacent and lay back and try to find yourself not and get involved or engaged in the word of God. The church has always had to deal with opposition from the inside and from the outside. And here we see in our text as we look today, we find that there's some opposition that you're going to have to deal with. Don't be alarmed when you find or you run into people that, that talk about or against God or against the word of God. Don't be alarmed of that. This is the time we're in. Some would say and study that perilous this last days will be the time between the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his second coming. But I believe based on this text, what we're reading today and the Bible says that we're in the last days based on the characteristics that I see here. We are experiencing the last days. Let's take a look in the text. As I think on growing up. I was a young man and a little boy and I was I was a teenager and I was on my way home one night and uh old guy stopped me on the railroad track and he had a ring and a chain and he gave it to me and and he said, Man, I'll sell this to you if you want to buy it. I was like, it looked good, you know. It was dark, kind of dark, so you know stuff can shine in the darkness and, and make you believe that it was real. But and so I ended up going on taking my little change I had, I bought it. I got home and I didn't tell my mother because I didn't want her to be upset because I had spent some change that I probably didn't need to spend. And, and so I bought the chain and, I, and the ring. And then one time at, we was out and about and playing at the park and one of my friends said, say, man, look like you got green around your neck and on your finger. And I looked and I rubbed and I saw green and I saw the green. And I, it's a term that we use sometimes when you've been tricked or you've been duped in life, it's called hoodwinked and bamboozled. 
And I was hoodwinked and bamboozled because I bought something that wasn't real. And my appeal today is, church, that we won't fall for false things, but hold on to the real thing, which is the word of God. Because out there on the World Wide Web, you have so much going on, so many sayings, so many things, but do you know the real from the fake? And from that point on, my friend brought that to my attention. I found myself from then on examining what I ever I receive or buy to make sure that it was real before I purchase it. And that's my appeal today to us that I want us to reach for the real thing and not the fake thing. Because there's a lot out there. Look in our text today. The first thing I'd like to share with us quickly, and, and it's the first point I'm saying, detest the characters that you encounter. Because you're going to have some out here in this life. From internal and external opposition. Look at me in the text. He says, Timothy, pay attention to this. That troubling times are going to come. But men will be lovers of themselves. That's the key thing to every one of these other characteristics, people loving themselves. And we know we see it every day. We see it on, on Facebook, how we taking selfies and we putting ourselves and I love myself and I want everybody to see me. As a matter of fact, I saw a caption the other day that somebody I knew and they said, I just love me. And I'm not making an appeal to you to hate you. But don't love you. As though you and only you matter and nothing else. Because sometimes that can be the mindset behind that thinking. Only what I want, what I desire, what I'm looking for matters. And nobody else. But that's not the mind of Christ. Jesus thought about us. <laughs> he just didn't think about himself. But he thought about others as an example. So test the characters. And some of these characters we see in the world today. Lovers of yourselves. Lovers of money. I'm learning more and more to get away from the thing about money and, and desiring so much to have so much. When I think about it, when I think about it, over the years, some of us have said at one point, I'm going to retire at this age and I'm going to have this X amount of dollars and I'm going to be able to live like this. But a pandemic came. God allowed some trouble to come. And you discovered that you had to go ahead and get some of those resources to help you sustain yourself through your life. Because the thing God is saying, tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Don't find yourself trying to put all your faith in your money and in jobs because we finding out that they are fickle too in this life. It says boasters, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. See a lot of that today. Even when I think about us being grown that have the responsibility of still serving our parents. What is your attitude when you need to serve your mother, father, or help them, and, or your elderly uncle, or auntie, or whoever it may be? What is, the, what, what, what is your motive? What is your mind behind it? Do you do it out of love, or do you do it because you want to just, you know, get recommendation, or you want somebody to recognize what you're doing? Because the Bible will make it clear in chapter 6, of the same of, the, of, of chapter six of the first of first Timothy, he will make it clear to us that that's our responsibility as Christians to take care of our loved ones without any strings being attached, but only for the love of God. And so, test the characters that you encounter. He says there are people that are self-control, no self-control, blasphemers, despisers of good, traitors, head, headstrong, hearty. Some people you just can't seem to get through to it all headstrong. I don't care what you say to them, how you try to help them, what you tell them, they don't want to hear it. Amen. But having a form, verse 5, of godliness, but denying the power. In, his, in, in this particular text here, he's, he's referring to those who were operating or functioning with the appearance of holiness. You got that on the outside and you got that on the inside. We, we know there are some who come even to the body, to the church house, and they have an appearance of holiness, but no power. And in and, and, and Matthew 23, Jesus will refer that to those hypocritical folk, 
the Pharisees, the scribes, those letter keepers and law keepers who thought they were the church, who would find themselves being hypocritical in their actions, in their walk, didn't have no power behind it because they denied the one who had all power. Still have some of those characteristics today. So Paul is saying, Timothy, beware. You're going to have some trouble that's going to infiltrate the church. Because we got opposition from the inside and even the outside. But my next point I'd like us to see because he, he gives us instructions to turn away from. He says, turn aside. Turn, do not allow them. Stop allowing others to influence you. You don't have to be influenced. You have the Holy Spirit in you, believer. You don't have to be influenced by the things of the world because you have the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of us. But then he goes on to say there's an example here of two. When I look at verse 6, he says, For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captive of a gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. Study would say that in this time, in the first century, women may have the responsibility to be at home, in their homes. But there were those who were yet still operating in the falsehoodness who were able to infiltrate those homes and to captivate those women. And I just want to just say to women, just, you know, don't be weak-willed. But, but, but find yourself, if you will, being yoked up with others that you can gain strength that can get into the word of God because you have those who can talk smooth talk about God that's in the world. They can have a conversation which I know of those who have fallen captive in some of those things and I've had to be able to help them out to understand that what they were saying was not of Jesus because even the devil knows the language and knows how to communicate it to you. But in the light of him doing that, when he finds yourself listening to hearing him, you find yourself being captivated by those words. But find yourself being yoked up with some stronger women in the church. And then we have an example there. He says in verse 7, but always learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They're always learning, never able to discern the actual truth. Question of the day, I asked a gentleman the other day, he said, yeah, man, I've been, I pray to God, I'm at, you know, every day at my house, and I, I read my Bible, and I, 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 you know, I ask God to give me directions and all that, and I said, well, what, what church, local church are you associated with? Oh, no, I'm not really, you know, in no church now, I grew up in the church, but I'm not really in the church now, but I just do it at home with God, so I just asked this question, I said, so what tools do you use to study the Bible? He said, what you mean by tools? He almost thought I was thinking a hammer, a screwdriver, uh, uh, you know, but I said, no, I'm, I mean, what tools do you use to study? Do you know anything about a concordance? Do you know anything about a Bible dictionary? Do you know anything about a commentary? Do you, do you have any tools? He said, no, nah, I ain't never heard of none of that. I said, this is the reason why it's important for community. This is the reason why it's important for you to be under the teaching of somebody who's been equipped to teach and preach the word of God to you so you can understand the things of God. So you won't fall for falsehoodness. So then verse 8, he says, and Janus and, Jarab and Jabiris resisted Moses. Yeah. The only place you'll find these people's names mentioned is here. But in Exodus chapter 8, we find that where these guys, because at Exodus chapter 7 through 8 and 9, you find where those miracles that God was doing. And when you remember when Moran had his staff and God said, throw it on the ground, it's going to turn into a serpent. But his snake ate up the snake of the magicians of Pharaoh. Well, these gentlemen were those who were a part of that assemble, and they've discovered that they couldn't overthrow the hand of God. Chapter 8, verses 18 and 19, discovered, they said, Moses, they said, this, who, whomever they serve, is the, the finger of God is with them, and we can't overthrow God. But we're in a world today where folks are trying to outrule God trying to put him to the side, trying to ostracize, trying to excuse him. We don't need you until, you know, we treat him like a spare tire. Saw a gentleman yesterday I knew. I grew up in the neighborhood. As I left from the street ministry yesterday, he had a flat. And he said, man, I don't even have a spare. And sometimes we do God like a spare. I pull you out when I need you. I need him every day. 
of my life. But then he says in verse 9, but they will be progress no further for their folly. God is exposing some things today. He's opening up some things. He's letting you see some folk that, that are not real but are fake. Even on the world wide web. Even in our politician system, we're seeing some things that God is exposing. But I heard, but I, what I understand and I do know as a believer, exposure is not all bad. It's good because if you can change when he helps you. Because you can't, you don't know where you are until he can let you see where you are. So my second thing, and I'm going to be hurrying on to get out your way. He says, Timothy, I want you to be aware. My first point was to test the characters that you encounter. But the next thing he says, take time to continue in the things you learn. He said, you carefully, look at verse 10 with me right quick. He says, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, which happened to me at Antioch and at Iconium and at Lystra. What persecution I endured. And out of them all, the Lord delivered me. But he says, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and apostles will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things you have learned and be assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from your childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. So he says, take time to continue in the things you've learned. A snapshot, Paul gives a little snapshot, a resume of his life and what he has been through. Now, he didn't suffer persecution for sin. He suffered for righteousness, for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're living in a world today that's dying daily that don't want to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't want to hear the truth of Jesus Christ and what he's done and what he's able to do in a man's life. I was in the counter yesterday. I was in Livingston, Texas at a funeral yesterday. And after the repast, I sat down and the cute gentleman that I know there, based on friendship, relationship, they came to me and we sit there and kind of talk. And the question kind of came up about going to church. And I know people say, yeah, I grew up in the church. I was in the church. I made to go to church when I was young and all that. Yeah. And I just sit there and I listen for a moment. And I thought about it. I say, you know, I just want to ask this question. Because I'm learning how to ask questions with, with, without being dogmatic and thinking you got to just believe what I'm telling you. And, but I just want to just have a conversation with you. Maybe you can see. Maybe God can let me turn the light. You can see yourself. And I said, well, what's wrong with now just going to church? You grew up in the church. You said, yeah, you got grown. You got away from the church. I said, well, what's wrong with now just going to church? And the gentleman said, well, you know, I don't mind no problem with going. He said, man, I'll be honest. I just, I just, I'm just lazy. I just don't want to, you know, really have to get up. And then I got to get my family together. And I just really don't, you know, it's just, it's it really the whole instant when he came down to it was just him. Another gentleman was talking and he said, yeah, I grew up. My daddy was a preacher and I, I just don't really want to be in the, you know, go to church right now, man. I'm, I just, I mean, and I said, well, you know, at the end of the day, this is how I conclude. I said, just at the end of the day. Where will we end up? One gentleman said, I'll probably end up in hell. I said, now you don't have to do that, but it's your choice. But I'm glad you were honest with where you are. I said, but now me, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold on to the bloodstained banner. I'm going to keep trusting Jesus to the end. Even in the event, if I'm wrong when I get there, if it ain't what, it, what the Bible says it is, then I'll discover it in the end. But I'm going to stay with Jesus right now other guy kind of walked on off and then he went on and we other guy we sit there and talk but my whole thing was to try to drive the fact that just because you grew up in the church just because you were in the, don't mean you can't be back in the church because that same God when you were going then is that same God now so take time to continue he says Timothy in the things you learned you got it from your grandmother and your mother they helped you to know the things. I even added to your life so that you would know some things. So Paul says, beware of the evil men, of evil growing worse and worse. We see it every day. 
You barely can turn the television on on the news and don't see some killing, some shooting, some disaster. So we can't, we, all we do, all we got is right now. All we have is today. Because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. So he says, take time to continue in the things what you've learned. But the last thing he says, teach the scripture at all times. Well, why? Because the word is profitable. Look with me in these last verses, verse 16 and 17. He says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's God breathed and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be completely Thoroughly equipped for every good work. Teach the scripture at all times. He says, teaching, what is it? Doctrine. It's just teaching. He says, what is reproof for? Why do we need the word of God? Why, why do I need the word of God? That, that's a good question because today many people think they don't need the word of God. But we need it because reproof is to point out what's not right. We are all were sinners on our way to a devil's hell. But until God turned the light on one day and let me see me for who I am. I know I got in the mirror this morning to make sure my tie was straight. My coat was all right. My trousers fit well. But that's not really who you are. Who you are is who you are on the inside. Because even when you're standing there with none of these on, you're still who you are on the inside. And that's who God wants to correct, the one on the inside. He says reproof, to point out what's wrong, or what's not right. And then he says correction, to get it right. What's wrong, you got to get it right. And we live in, in a time when it seems that nobody really cares about getting what's wrong right. Because we call it wrong right. But here he says, you got to get it right. And then for instruction in righteousness, he says you need to keep it right. Keep working on it. I told a young man, I said, yeah, just go ahead on it. Keep, just, if, if you ain't got to go every Sunday, but just start somewhere. When the opportunity presents, start somewhere. And many times, believers in Jesus Christ and World Wide Web, we got to start somewhere. Just can't stay complacent. Slowful, lazy, not wanting to, to, to involve ourselves at all in any form of, of the church and think that we're going to grow. You'll fall to the wayside for the doctrine of false doctrine. He says, for instruction in righteousness to keep it right, to equip for every good work. That's personal life and ministry. Because you have some affairs in your own life, in your own home that you need to keep right. And then you have things that you do in ministry in the body of Christ. It says, in my closing, as I think about this text, my appeal to us today, everyone in the body of Christ, is not to fall to strange doctrine, but to hold to the truth of God's word. So the first thing he says is test the characters that you encounter. Know the folk that you are involved and around you. Don't be hoodwinked or bamboozled by the things of this world. But then he says, take time to continue in the things you learn. I know here at Good Shepherd and the Good Shepherd Nights, we do get the word of God. So hold on to the word of God. And the last thing he says to Timothy, teach the scriptures at all times. And here we're going to uphold the bloodstained banner at Good Shepherd Missionary Baptist Church teaching the word of God. That you can get what's wrong right in your life and that you can keep it right. But in my closing, as I think about Paul declaring that it was the Lord in verse number 11, he said, who rescued me out of it all. When I think about it, as I was growing up as a kid, I had a best friend of mine. His dad was a lifeguard. And every summer, I would get a chance to go to the pool. And I thank God for his father because he taught me how to swim. And I remember he said, I want you to just jump off the board. 
Don't dive off. I just want you to walk out on the diving board and just jump in. And it was like about 10 feet deep. My heart was racing fast. But I went on and followed the instruction. He stood by as I looked back at him. He said, go ahead and jump because I got you. I jumped in one time and went down and came up and swam to the side. Caught the side of the bank and got back out. He said, I want you to go back and jump in again. I came back around and I jumped in again and swam to the side and grabbed the bank and got back up. He said, I want you to go back and do it again. So I came back around and I jumped back into 10 feet. And then the last time when I was reaching for the side, my hand slipped. And his dad seen me and they said he went up under and he jumped in and he rescued me. He laid me to the side. He said, you going to be all right. And all I'm saying to you, believers today, don't panic in a time of pandemic. But we got a lifeguard, a spiritual lifeguard named Jesus who can rescue you from anything you're going through. I'm glad his dad jumped in and got me and brought me out of the water. But how many times have Jesus got you out of the waters of life? And rescued you from the troubles of this life. Troubles are still going to come. But they're not going to last always. And I'm just glad that this Savior who died on a Friday evening. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. Stayed there all night. Friday night. All day Saturday. But it was early, 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 early Sunday morning. He got up, he got up, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. He's still able to keep you in a time of pandemic. And I'm glad, not mad, nor sad, but I'm glad that I can hold on to God's unchanging hand. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? If he done something for you, you ought to make some noise. If he done something for you, you ought to give him some praise. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Ah, no, he's all right. Ah, no, he's all right. When I think about the things he's doing for me in these six months coming up, I thank God because I know I know he's all right. Yes, sir. He's good. He can deliver you. He can rescue you out of any trouble that you're in. He's just that kind of God who knows how to deliver us. Make the appeal now to someone who may not know him. This God, this Jesus I'm talking about, this Holy Spirit that lives in the believer. He's that same one over 2,000 years who died on the cross. Gave his hands and his feet for you and I. And today he can do it for you. If you haven't met him, today would be a good time to do it. Because tomorrow is not promised to none of us. Jesus, and I like the way Paul puts it simply in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says, I deliver to you that that I receive. The gospel. That Christ died. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. If you can put your trust, your faith, your belief, your hope in the fact of what he did on the cross, you can be saved. But maybe, maybe, maybe you find yourself out of the will of God, out of the ark of safety. You're not in the church. You say you trusted him, but you're not yoked up with the local church. We'll be glad to assist you. We'll be glad to have you here at the Good Shepherd Missionary Baptist Church. The phone number is 713-672-9847. 713-672-9847. We'd be glad for you to call. We would love to lead you further in your journey with Christ. 
if you if you need a church home because one day we got to leave here it's coming reckoning day is on the way we see trouble every day now and it's time to get it right with the Lord so today would you trust him as your Lord and your Savior that you won't be lost let us pray Father we thank you for this opportunity to make the appeal to your people to trust your word Jesus Christ the only one that we won't fall to strange doctrine, teaching, but we can know the truth concerning your word. We say thank you. And if anyone has trusted you, Lord, I thank you right now in advance for them trusting you as their Savior. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen, 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 amen. It is offering time. It is offering time. We can't be God-given no matter how hard you try. Because God every day gives to us in one way or another. So we are thankful and grateful to have the opportunity and the privilege to be able to give. Because God is gracious in giving to us. And so we know here, if you need a good shepherd, your deacon... Feel free to call him. He will assist you in any way to receive your offering. We thank you all, those of you who have been continually giving online. We thank you for doing that in support of the ministry of Jesus Christ. It's not about the preacher. It's not about the pastor getting money. It's about the ministry of Jesus Christ and being able to serve in the capacity that he has given us. Amen. We let us pray. Father, we thank you for the offerings that shall be lifted here. We thank you for everyone that is going to give. We ask now, Lord, that you would bless those things and bless those that have partaken. It is in your son Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. we like to recognize before we close our, we don't have any anniversaries today. We do have birthdays for this time. But we don't have any anniversaries. But we know what to do here. Good Shepherd, give one power clap as I call the names of those who have birthdays. Kathy Bailey, James Leonard, Corey Haywood, Chanzanique Ben, Mary Jason, and Kenneth Roberson. Amen. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. Amen. We thank God. We hope something was said today that we can take with us and even challenge us to grow as believers in the body of Christ. I believe about 1010, we want to uh, begin with our Sunday school for today. Pastor, do you have anything else? Okay. For 1010 to 11 o'clock, we'll have our Sunday school, so you'll have a little time to make the adjustment. If there's nothing else, we're ready. Let us stand. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for your prayers and your amens. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forever. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless each and every one of you.